Hi, I'm Dan with Family Home Theater, and some people have been asking me about more specifics about my screen wall and the masking panels and how that's all put together. So I figured I'd go ahead and do a quick video. Maybe it'll be quick, maybe not, but uh, a video more in depth about a screen wall, the masking panels, and all that kind of stuff. So Greg, this video is for you since you commented on my last video asking more specifics. And it's for everyone else also who happens to be watching. So first thing, I have a good opportunity to show you more of my screen wall because I've decided to go ahead and get more material for my screen. I'm going to be replacing this one because this has seen better days. It's got like there's little indentation there. There's goobers on it. A kid marked on it with a marker, so I have more spandex, so I'm going to be replacing the spandex on my screen. I'm going to be going through stretching it out and getting the wrinkles out and all that and also show you how the screen wall works while doing that. Let's see how Fabric Warehouse Wholesale Direct did with this. I'll open it carefully so that I don't... There should be one continuous piece of material. Let's see if it's nice and clean. And there it is. This is matte milliskin spandex. And this is three yards of it, so that should be good. This is a, a 10 foot wide screen. You might be going, wait, three yards, that's only nine feet. This stuff stretches, so it'll stretch out to 10 feet wide. But yeah, this actually looks like it's a pretty good piece of material here, so I will be using this to replace this. So let's go into these masking panels here. So nothing special, it's a DIY frame. I didn't buy these. I built them. Alright, so to show you how this works here, and this isn't exactly square, I kind of have to rebuild these because the brackets I used was a bit flimsy. There's one right there. Yeah, so it's they, they've fallen off a couple times and stuff like that, but uh, the way I have this made is as you see that right here this is kind of a bit more in depth and that is so that this Well, number one, it can fit against the screen like that, but also, if I have this off to the side, since this is going in, like that, it stays in place. Also, what I've done with these is underneath here, I don't know if I can move this velvet out of the way, but... It's maybe a little hard to see, but I have a neodymium magnet. Uh, the velvet's covering it up, but I have a neodymium magnet that's been epoxied into the wood. So I drilled a hole into the wood, put a neodymium magnet, this looks like it's about maybe a three-quarter inch wide magnet, and that is inside there underneath this felt, or the velvet. And on the screen, you can't really see it because it's underneath, but at various places, uh, depending on the widescreen format, I do have metal screws up there that the magnets will be attracted to. So that kind of helps to get this to stay in place. I can kind of feel right there, there is a magnet that's holding it. You can kind of see as I stick it in there, it holds itself into place. I think there's also some in here. I thought I had some in there for 4x3 viewing, but but also there's a magnet over here, or a screw up there, so I can have it all the way on the outside, like that. Now speaking of these panels, these panels are covered in, basically it's a black velvet material. So this material is very good at absorbing light. Uh, I guess you can kind of see it under these bright lights, but... This velvet material is very good at absorbing light, and what that is good for, also the uh, frames of the screen have also been wrapped... Ah. See, I should have used stronger magnets. Uh, here's a website that I've seen that uh, I think uh, would have magnets that would work better. Uh, if I was going to do this again, actually I will be doing this again because we're going to be moving pretty soon. But uh, when I rebuild the screen, I do plan to use larger magnets because these have fallen down during movies before and sometimes I have kids sitting up here and yeah, that's never a great thing. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole frame of the screen 
is wrapped in this black velvet. And what that velvet does is, since the projector is not perfectly square with the screen, uh, the velvet, you can basically make the image just a tiny bit larger than the screen and the velvet will absorb any overspill so that you don't really notice it. Now, if you're really careful and get your projector exactly right, I mean, then you wouldn't have any overspill, but really it's very difficult to get this projector like exactly right so that you know, you're down to like the millimeter perfect on the screen. So usually you might just have to zoom out just a tiny bit just to fill up the entire screen. But yes, you do want to be careful when mounting the projector to get it as square as possible so that you don't have a ton of overspill that you have to adjust the projector to. Here's a little bit better picture of the back of this thing. Basically just uh, framed it up with angle brackets here. Not the sturdiest thing in the world, but it's worked somewhat. Uh, again though, if I or when I do it again, I'm going to use uh, bigger, better magnets. All right, so let's talk about the screen wall itself. And to talk about uh, how the screen wall is built, might as well take the screen down. I guess I'll show you what I'm doing here. So behind the screen, I have four screws. There's one there. And one up here, and there's a couple others on the other side, and that's just going to the frame to hold the frame against the wall here. All right, so now you can kind of see the back, and uh, yep, stuff tends to collect back there. So there's what the back of the screen looks like. Bunch of junk collect. I mean, all my movie collection, spare speakers, random laptop, N64, computer parts, boxes, all sorts of wonderful stuff. Uh, but the screen itself here. Actually, I'll talk about the wall first while I move this out to flip it around. All right, so the wall is not like it. You don't have to like fully frame out a stud wall with 16 inch on center studs. Basically what I have here, so basically the way this works, I have a stud from the floor all the way up to the ceiling. I couldn't fit a toe foot stud in my vehicle, so I had to basically laminate two of them here and they go all the way across. And there's another stud over here. And basically there's just a couple screws. There's a screw there, uh, there's I have them down here. Oh, yep. There's one back there. You can kind of see it. It's set on the floor. Basically, I just have four screws. I think it's just four. And then there's this because it's kind of twisted a little bit. But yeah, that wasn't quite long enough there. But I just have some screws holding it against the against the wall there. And then I just have two cross members coming down here on either side. Of course, as you saw when I took the screen down, that's how the screen actually mounts to the wall. So it's nothing too awfully complex. You just need to square off, uh, you just need to get some studs, square it off, put a couple cross members, and then you can mount your screen to it. It doesn't have to be anything overly engineered, like I said, 16 inch off center studs. You don't need to do that. This is not structural. All it's doing is it's holding up a theater screen that's really not that heavy. All right, so now I'll show you how the screen is constructed. All right, so the back of the screen here, of course, we have the wood frame. Uh, again, this isn't something I bought. I built it myself. These two here are basically uh, supports so that the screen doesn't bow inward like that. It might bow in because of all the tension that's put on here when uh, the spandex is stretched out. It doesn't feel like there's that much tension. I might be able to get away with not having these. But these do have black velvet on the front and then also you'll notice on the back of the screen this is a gray material whereas the actual screen is a white material. Now one important feature to note is that these don't go exactly in between because if they went in between, well, that wouldn't work. So I actually have this offset a little bit with some washers right here 
And what these washers do is this moves this back just enough so that it's not pressing against the screen. Because if it's pressing against the screen, then I mean you're going to see it there. Also, with these two layers of material, it's enough that I'm actually not seeing this. Uh, I'm not actually seeing through this so that these aren't visible and I have the black velvet just to make sure that uh, no light's going to reflect off of it. Now one thing that this has done that's been a disadvantage is the uh, HVAC intake for my home is actually behind the screen here so all the air gets sucked in through this wall. Uh, you can see that there's kind of some dust here that I wasn't able to vacuum off. It also gets sucked through the screen and so after a while the screen gets just a tiny bit brown and you can see like especially if there's a white image projected on the screen you can see two clean areas <laughs> where these studs are so every once in a while I do have to vacuum off the screen or take it off and wash it or in this case just replace the material altogether. But let's go ahead and see if this is going to bow in when I take these off at all. Alright, so you can kind of see how that hole looks right now. And when I take it out, it does bend in ever so slightly there. So the screen is pulling the wood in a tiny bit. Uh, so I probably will make sure to leave these on or put these back on once I get the material off because over time I can see this just bowing more and more until I have a screen that's slightly concave. Alright, so now I got those off. Time to take the screen material off. Basically the screen material is all held on basically with thumbtacks here. Now you can see one right there. And there it is, and I only lost one thumbtack. And here I am walking around in my socks. Somewhere around here. <laughs> well, if I find it, uh, I'll make sure to not take it out of the video. All right, so what kind of wood is this? This is very special wood that was imported from Sweden. So this is a special Swedish wood that uh, they just happened to have at Home Depot, and it was it looked straight, and so I got it. So, no, you don't need special wood from Sweden. You just need to get uh, wood that looks relatively straight. Relative, well, as straight as you can get. Not warped. Just, you know, straight wood. This is from Home Depot. Look around. You'll find something that looks good. Uh, this isn't hardwood or anything. I think this is a softwood. I, I'm sure there's a... Uh, I'm sure there's carpenters out there screaming at me what this is. I, I, pine or ash or pine. I don't I don't know what this is. It says it's made in Sweden. It's number two and better crown one by four ten foot S4S and there's UPC if you want to look it up. Makes wood. So whatever that is. Alright what else can I show you about this? Uh, there's this down here. This is just this is also spandex on the bottom and on the top just to provide a nice border around the screen so you kind of have your movie screen you know inside this sea of black because it looks more appealing. I know some people like to put lights behind their screen. I would find that incredibly distracting. Uh, some people like to do borderless screens, but you have to get your image size exactly right, but you can do that if you have like black velvet behind it. But what I've done, I just got black spandex for the top and the bottom. Some people might opt for uh, black velvet that might absorb light a little bit better, but this works pretty well for me. And this is just tacked onto the front of my MDF subwoofers here. Oh, and the astute among you might notice that uh, this tweeter in this uh, Klipsch RC64, it has been rotated 90 degrees. I actually took it out and rotated it, I'm, and I believe I have a video somewhere on my channel where I did that. All right, let's go ahead and put the new spandex on. Holy cow, I'm going to have to recalibrate my projector. So this was white spandex when it began, but uh, it's yellowed over time. So yeah, I'm going to have a nice bright white screen all ready for my new projector from Epson if Epson ever gets their projectors shipped out to people who aren't high class, high dollar reviewers and yeah, anyhow. That's the difference after a while when you're filtering 
all your house's air through your theater screen. Now you do want to use two layers of material because one layer you might see through the screen a little bit, there's going to be a little bit of light bleed, but with two layers it's going to, that second layer is going to catch any light that does get through the first layer so that you don't see things behind your projector because like things like this might reflect a little bit if you have a bright projector so this will make sure that uh, no light's getting through. Now in the first corner I like to put in three tacks because there's going to be a lot of stress on this as we just start to uh, stretch this out. Some people ask should I have the gray front or the white front? Uh, maybe if you're dealing with ambient light you might want a gray front just to help with your back levels a little bit. If you've got a fully light controlled room I'd say white would be better. Now I did measure about 5.2 foot Lamberts off my screen which honestly isn't that bright but my projector is also not the brightest one in the world. I mean it works for us. It'll be interesting to see what the Epson does. But it'll also be interesting to see if a pure a brand new white screen is going to uh, increase my foot Lamberts. It probably will, somewhat. Not sure my camera set off, but I do have three tacks on either side. Uh, you probably don't want to stretch this out too much because the more you stretch it out, the more then you might be able to see through the material, so you don't need to get it like, super stretched. Uh, there are going to be wrinkles, but don't worry, we're going to take care of the wrinkles, so don't worry about the wrinkles. I'll show you the easiest trick to get your wrinkles out of your screen. Don't have to iron it or anything. Good tip here would be not to use anything like oak, because you want to be able to get the thumbtacks in it, so a soft wood's going to work better for that. Hardwood, well, I guess you can get a tack hammer or something. And of course we're going to have material off the bottom here, so I'll just go ahead and trim that off once the screen's all stretched up on there. Got a nice brand new razor blade here so that I can cut holes exactly where these screws need to go. I do that because, as you might have noticed in the beginning of the video, there's some imperfections in the screen at the top and bottom. Here, I'll show you that real quick. Right there, there's some arrows. So, I'm going to try and prevent that. Alright, so after you've hung a spandex screen, there might be some wrinkles in it. Or maybe if you've taken it down, washed it, then it came out all wrinkly, and no matter how much you stretch it, it might have wrinkles. Uh, actually, I got lucky here. I actually don't see any wrinkles. And there's a little one right here. Okay, there's a couple little wrinkles. A wrinkle right there. And the best way to get a wrinkle is with a hairdryer. Alright, so there it is. There's my screen wall. Pretty simple framing system. Screen's not too bad. I think it cost me maybe about $120 in materials. Uh, today the spandex cost me $45 for three yards. I don't know how much the wood would cost today. Probably more because wood's gone up since I made this back in 2015, 2014, something like that. You can also get uh, black velvet material. There's no special, I mean, I guess there are some better velvets than others, but just get some black velvet for the screen border and that'll help absorb any light that's overflowing. So there it is. If you have any more specific questions, uh, I might be able to answer them. Just go ahead and ask them down in the forum. Uh, there's other videos here that I've made on my channel that uh, you might find interesting. And as always, thanks for watching.